Oh, I'm excited for this one, guys. You've heard all of the terrible puns, but today we are actually gonna be making coffee with Coffee Lake, so let's go. You know, I actually produced a video like this a year ago where we actually made coffee using a computer's water cooling loop. However, I wasn't thinking ahead to the future. We were on Skylake at the time. I wasn't saying, oh, you know, there's gonna be a CPU codenamed coffee and it would be perfect to do that video then. No, I wasn't thinking that, but now I am. Now we have the aptly named CPU. We have Coffee Lake here in our presence and I want to make coffee with Coffee Lake. Now the way that we're gonna do this isn't like the way I showed you guys in the intro, that actually wouldn't work at all. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna have a CPU block mounted directly onto the 8600K. We're gonna crank that thing up to 4.5, 4.7 gigahertz. We're gonna overclock it, then we're gonna have a water cooling loop just running distilled water so that we can just heat up the water to the point that you can actually make coffee with it. So once we have the CPU block with the CPU installed and we have it overclocked, we're just gonna let a stress test run to heat up the water itself, and then it's gonna actually get us to the point where we can put the granules in, we can make the coffee, and everything is gonna be delicious. But you're sitting there saying, Brett, it's gonna ruin the water block, it's gonna ruin the fittings, it's gonna ruin the pump, it's gonna ruin everything. You can't put coffee in a water cooling loop. You're absolutely right, you can't. And guess what? I'm completely willing to ruin my stuff so that we can enjoy this video together. I want to taste the sweet nectar of horribly metallic coffee, because oh man, it's bad. Oh, this is good coffee though. Okay, so obviously the first step is installing the CPU. As I mentioned, we're using the i5-8600K. We're gonna have it overclocked to 4.5, 4.7 gigahertz, somewhere in there. We're gonna find out what's actually stable. So you'll notice that the mounting mechanism around the CPU is a little janky, and that's because I lost all of the mounting hardware for the CPU block that we're gonna be using, but you know what? I tightened it down with some zip ties, and it's totally gonna work. It's gonna be completely okay. So don't judge me, please. Now as far as the rest of the system goes, none of it really matters, so we're just gonna be using a single four gigabyte stick of G-Skill Trend at Z. Uh, and then we're also going to be using a GT 1030 as the graphics card just so it can sit there, doesn't need extra power. It's not really the focus of this video. The point isn't to make the best water cooling PC, it's just to make a functional one so that this little chip right here will heat up the water and give us coffee. Okay, okay so there's actually a pretty special reason why we're using this janky setup. It's because I want to use the Rajin Tech AIO water cooling setup because it'll allow us to see the, the, the liquid turn into coffee. Um, so let's, let's get this installed. Now I've already tested out this, this method uh, prior to doing this video just to make sure that the water is actually gonna stay in the block, everything's gonna be okay. It may look a little broken, but that's kind of the point. Uh, it's, just, it's just supposed to be functional. So that's step one to getting this all set up. Now, step two will be to use this EK pump that I have because the pump on this Rajantech AIO isn't as strong as I'd like it to be and I'd like the water to flow a bit more. Now you guys might completely and totally fairly judge me for the way that I'm about to do this, but you know what? I tested it out, it works, everything's secure, I can get this all installed and the water is not gonna leak as soon as it's... So the reason we're actually using this EK water block is because not only uh, does it have a stronger pump so it's gonna allow the water to flow a bit quicker over the block, it's also because it has this little reservoir are attached up top, which is gonna allow us to add the coffee granules as well as the water pretty easily. And if you do notice, it's a little bit pink. That's because I've already done a hard line build with this piece of tech and uh, it just kind of stained it. So I'm gonna be drinking that as well as the coffee. Okay, so obviously the perfect temperature for brewing a cup of coffee is around the 100 degrees Celsius mark. We don't wanna do that to our precious little system. We don't wanna do that to the coffee lake chip. We just wanna get it to the point where the water's hot, but not actually, um, you know, it's it's not lukewarm, but it's also not boiling. So we have, we have to find that good middle ground of an overclock just to make sure that the water is heating up, the CPU is not thermal throttling, and it's just dissipating the heat and we have some homeostasis going on, all right? So now it'll be time to actually load up the water into the, into the pump. So as I mentioned, I did test this out yesterday. Um, one of the issues that I do have is I lost the cap that goes onto this Rajantech uh, block right here. So we just stick a little bit of paper towel in there and it's gonna make sure that the water doesn't come flying out as soon as this pump is activated. But we have a bit of distilled water. We're just gonna pour that right in. As I mentioned, the fittings are perfectly secure. I hope that this thing doesn't fall over. This isn't supposed to be the way you do it at home. Then we need to plug in the PC. We have the water in the water block so the CPU isn't gonna overheat instantly. Okay, that should be good to go. As soon as we turn it on, everything should go. We have the graphics card plugged in right over here. This system should be good to turn on. Yes, I'm ready. I'm so ready. 
Uh, hopefully, okay. <laughs> I really hope that the it doesn't come flying out anywhere. It should be fine. Ready, three, two. There goes the pump. All right, the welder's not flying out of anywhere. Doesn't seem to be getting on the motherboard. The pump is jiggling a little bit. Looks like it needs a little bit more distilled water. There we go. Oh, it turned off. Why'd you turn off? Oh no. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. It looks like there is a little water. Oh, yep, the water is coming out of the pump. Crap, crap baskets. This isn't how it's supposed to go, Tank. That is water, crap. Hey, uh, so there there were no issues whatsoever. There, no leaks, nothing to get it on them, but hey, it works, it works, okay? You know what, I made a mistake. We couldn't find the cap. I thought paper towels was gonna do it. Apparently, I didn't test the suction. You know what, share this video, please, so that you guys can experience the the scare of almost breaking a $600 motherboard. Can you, can you do that for me? Can you share this video? Smash that like button. I'm not condoning the treatment of computer parts like this. But you know what? This is for you guys. I did this for you, so it would mean the world to me if you guys could actually share it instead of judging me. Thanks. Okay, let's fill up the... <laughs> Everything's fine now, though. You can see we're in the BIOS. There's nothing wrong. Okay, we just need to leave a little room so that we can add the coffee a little bit later on. The pump is running. The water is actually circulating. So we're 100% good to go. Now, if we come over here to the BIOS, you can see that I'm actually running the CPU at 1.5 gigahertz. That was just because I was doing some tests earlier to make sure it was stable. Didn't want the temperatures getting up too high without anything else. So we're at 30 degrees Celsius right now. We want it to, we want it to be stable in like the 90 to 95 Celsius range. So let's, let's set this to 4.5 because the all core boost on, on the 8600K is 4.3. So we're actually applying a little bit of an overclock. So let's let the overclock apply. Let's get the water going to a nice temperature and then we can, we can really experience this together. So we're running at about 34, 35 degrees Celsius. Let's see, let's see if we do any sort of thermal throttling once it's at 100% load. Okay, so it's not immediately throttling, 60 degrees. Let's keep an eye on this right now. All right, so as you guys can see, we're in about the 60 degrees Celsius region with this 40, uh, 4.5 overclock. You know what? I actually think that this isn't high enough. Let's go to 4.7, and then hopefully the temperatures will go up to about 70 degrees. And then once it starts normalizing, that's when we should see the temperatures start to rise quite heavily. And that's when we know that the water will be ready for our coffee on Coffee Lake. So let's shut this down and let's give it a better overclock now. Okay, so with a 4.7 overclock, we have 74 degrees Celsius. That's still not as high as I want it to be. I think a little cheeky 4.9. Hopefully it doesn't thermal throttle, no thermal throttling, 82 degrees. You know what fam, I see that it's running at 4.9 gigahertz, the temperatures are okay, and that's good enough. But you know what, here at the UF Disciple Channel, we don't settle for good enough, so we're gonna get this puppy above five gigahertz, all right? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this above five gigahertz. We're gonna make sure that this coffee is made nice and quick because I am tired of waiting. As you guys can probably tell, I am, I'm starting to wind down with my energy. I need this coffee, I need it right now, okay? We couldn't even get five with air cooling, so let's go for 5.1. There's no reason to not do it. Yeah, of course it worked. This is the UF Disciple Channel. Things work. It may look like we're breaking things. It may look like we're spilling water all over a motherboard, but that doesn't happen. No, fam. We get things going. We make things work. Oh, 5.1 gigahertz, stress test, 91C, 92C, perfect coffee brewing temperature. Yeah, fam. 87. No, you get back up there. We need that temperature high. You know what, we should probably put a fan on the VRMs. 89, 90 degrees Celsius. This is the perfect brewing temperature for coffee on Coffee Lake. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let it do a little cheeky time lapse now, hey? Okay, so we ran into a few bit of issues uh, in between me uh, recording stuff. 5.1 was a little too high, it was thermal throttling, so we just, we're gonna drop it down to a nice, stable five gigahertz. Okay, so the temperature is definitely getting a lot higher. And then the water right now, it's at a decent 42 degrees C. Still not enough. You know what? I actually think that now it now that it's high, uh, we we need to keep the we need to drop the clock. So 4.9 gigahertz. It's this tricky balance of making sure that the CPU is stable, but then we're also heating up the water. So this is this is obviously not recommended for you guys at home. This is not supposed to be something that you guys are supposed to do. This is this is supposed to be a fun experiment for people like me who just want to do it. So don't try this at home. You're probably gonna ruin something. Uh, Cause I was nearly this close to doing that myself. 
No immediate throttle. Ah, oh, immediate throttling. That's not what we want. You know, if we deleted this, this probably would work a little bit better. GPU throttling down to 4.4, 4.3. Okay, so let's let's uh let's stop it again. Let's uh let's put everything at default. Obviously, this is just a mission to get one cup of coffee, but you know what, fam? It's worth it. It's worth it for you guys. So be sure to smash that like button. This coffee is gonna be terrible. It's gonna be so good. Okay, so no immediate throttling now. Uh, but temps are at 80 degrees C, so that's perfect. Default, having the, the, the turbo clock kind of adjust its own voltage. Uh, instead of overheating, we should hopefully just get down clocking and keep the temperatures pretty stable. So we're at the default turbo boost at 4.3 gigahertz. I'm just gonna let it sit for now, uh, and hopefully after a little bit, we should get the temperature up. Uh, and hopefully no thermal throttling, hopefully no down clocking. I'm excited! Woo! Oh no! It's leaking! Oh! Frick! The block itself. Okay, so we ran into some technical difficulties. This uh this cheap Rajin Tech block, unfortunately, uh the acrylic is actually leaking. And so there we go. Look at that. Look at that. That is that is not healthy. For, uh, for continuing the test. We had to shut down the system because uh, that, that started leaking. But you know what? The water is still hot. So at a, at a toasty 63 degrees Celsius, I'm gonna go ahead and make some coffee regardless, all right? So let's do this in a little bit like non-good fashioned way. I'm just gonna pour the water out into the cup. That's 63 degree water. See, it is steaming. It is hot. It's not like it's not hot. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is I'm making a cup of coffee right now. And I'm gonna finish it off regardless of whether or not we've experienced some hardware failure. There we go. Getting all the water out of the block. Just enough for one cup of coffee. All right. Where's the instant coffee? Where's the instant coffee tank? Oh, it's in there. Instant coffee is in here. There we go. <laughs> all right. Decent spoonful of instant coffee, guys, right in there. So this is coffee that is literally being made with Coffee Lake. Stir that in. I think it needs just a little bit more. There we go. Let's get some sugar. Where's the sugar? The sugar's back in here. Let's get a little bit of sugar. There we go. You know what? I think it's the motherboard or the power supply. I heard a like whining and I think, I think water got in there. Here we go. All right, the water, the coffee from Coffee Lake is done. It is time for Tank and I to test it. This is the end of the video, guys. We're gonna try the coffee from Coffee Lake. It is probably gonna taste like metal. I put a little sugar in it. Um, the first one to puke loses, I suppose. Let's stir it up again. All right, I'll go first. I'll go first since this is my venture. Let's, uh, this is actually a lot better than last time. Really? Mm-hmm. Here, you drink out of the other side of the cup. Sure. It's not metallic. It's actually not bad. That's not bad coffee. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to, I'm going to finish what's in here, guys. That wasn't as bad. Ooh, I think I had too much though. That was like my fourth cup of coffee this morning. Okay. So thank you guys for watching this endeavor of making coffee on Coffee Lake. One like equals one respect for the dead PC. Uh, you know, I was willing to risk it all for you guys. I was willing to make sure that we could have a video that was just fun, making coffee with Coffee Lake. Tank's over there trying to make sure that the motherboard's okay. I actually think it was the power supply that died from the, the cracked block, uh, but you know, that's the type of risk I anticipated. Do not try this at home. Do not trust a acrylic block uh, to hold in the water as you heat it up. Uh, <laughs> geez, I mean, I mean, imagine if that was like an actual water cooling loop. That would have been terrible. 
Yeah. Like we would have lost a whole lot more. Like we just had a GT 1030 on there. So whatever, whatever is dead, we can replace. Not a big deal, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like button. One like equals one respect. Be sure to share this with all of your friends who keep making those coffee lake jokes. Cause you know what? We actually finally did it. Okay guys, so a uh, little aftermath for you. Uh, I know you guys are probably concerned about the motherboard. We, uh, we put it on a different power supply. Works totally fine. Everything's good to go. The, uh, the godlike gaming is not dead by any stretch. The motherboard was fine. It actually didn't get that much water on it. It was actually, holy crap. So that Russian Tech power uh, CPU block leaked on us and it's the, it's, the, uh, it's the power supply. You see that water dripping out, guys? Yeah, it, uh, it, apparently, it apparently doused that uh, the power supply. So Ripperoni 850 watt power supply, lesson learned, don't use acrylic blocks, but you know what? I knew the risks going into it, and you know, I appreciate your comments telling me I'm an idiot, but this was fun. This was literally, like I had fun doing it. It's a little scary when you know you have one of the best motherboards for Z370 uh, just kind of shut off on you, but that's, that's, that, that's the direction I really want to take this channel, is just enjoying the technology, maybe putting it in some risks, Maybe uh, maybe not doing things the, the best way possible, but I, I had fun. And that's that's really where we want to take it, right Tank? Yeah. Shut up Tank. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your concerns. Thank you for your criticisms. Thank you for your insults. I really appreciate all of you. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers. Oh, <laughs> oh.